Namaste and welcome you all for this new series from today, which is getting started from today, the 1st of June, on account of the International Yoga Day that we are going to have on 21st of June. So I just thought that what could be the best way to commemorate this International Yoga Day? Every year we try to have it celebrated in different ways by having different programs, the mass yoga performances, and we used to have great yogis coming to our yoga sala in Bangalore, and we used to have wonderful direct sessions with them. But as you all know, this year, due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation, and also with the uh, crisis which is happening, not just only in our country, but worldwide. So there is a challenge before us that we all have to stay home, and still we need to continue all our activities. And it is in this scenario that we see that, uh, especially with yoga, yoga has a great role to play. It has a great support. People are benefiting a lot. Even in this time, you know, many of us have started online classes and everything, so we are trying to be connected to the uh, yoga. So I thought, why not we have a kind of an interactive session, a series with great yoga masters, uh, though they are spread across the globe in different places, but today, thanks to technology, that we can come together and meet with each other. So when I was thinking that we should have a, a discussion like this, so then some of my friends suggested that you should go with the a kind of the series like coffee with current and all those things. So I said, though I take a cup of coffee every day, but I'm not sure about other yoga masters. And so I thought it should not be coffee, but it should be kapi. So kapi is a South Indian version of coffee, but here the ka, it means for kashaya. It means you know, kashaya and personal interaction with a yogi. That's what I thought. And then when I had released the announcement for it, it was spelled K-A-P-I, Kapi. So many people thought it is Kapi. So what is Kapi? They said Kapi with a yogi. I said, why not? Because Kapi means monkey. And yogis are supposed to deal with the real Kapi of mind. The mind is a real monkey. Our Dr. Nagarasana used to say, uh, yoga is yum, 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 managing the monkey mind. That is what we are doing. So we are all working with the kapi of the mind. So it can be kapi with a yogi. So we have a yogi with us, Dr. Anand Bala Yogi. And a kapi here, I'm talking to him. I'm the kapi <laughs> mind of the modern times. So it could be, you know, kapi with a yogi. And also kapi, the kashayam and personal interaction with the yogi. And uh, uh, Dr. Anand Bala Yogi is a multifaceted personality who is also a singer, a musician. So he can sing kapi ragam also. <laughs> so it is kapi with a yogi also. So in multiple ways it can uh, mean. So I had also given a you know a quiz to many of my students to say. So you derive what what is kapi would mean. You know you can like I said kashayam and personal interaction with a yogi. You can bring out with your own definition for it. Let's see how they all given a definition for this program. So with this, once again I welcome all of you for this series, which is going to start from today. And for uh, at least for the next 21 days, we are going to meet each other. And though it's not the right time for having a coffee, but yes, kashaya could be had. So I thought this time would be convenient because mostly in the yoga community, we would have completed our classes and everything. And you know we can meet each other. So today, when I thought of this program, I couldn't think of uh, somebody to start with. I was thinking who to start with. It should be in a very ease, very comfort, very cool interaction with Somebody. So uh, I couldn't think of anybody other than uh, our big brother, Sri Dr. Anand Balayogi Bhavanani ji. And immediately he also uh, immediately responded and he immediately accepted and he is here with us. So to the field such of a Yoga, such a pleasure to be with you, Subhu. It means a lot, and uh, you make everybody feel at ease. So definitely, it's going to be a wonderful time. Thank you, thank you, Anna. So it is. Um, uh, I don't think in the field of yoga. Dr. Anandji needs the introduction. He is well known. He is one of the superstars of the uh, yoga field. And recently he has taken avatar of a, 
a gangsta yogi also <laughs> due to the facebook uh, lives so that is another thing so that's what he is so he is you know kind of an unassuming uh, yogi who has multifaceted personality and he is a uh, yoga yoga acharya is a medical professionally qualified medical doctor is a musician and he has enormous knowledge on not just the vocal music but on instruments like mridangam and he also attends a dance school along with his wife so he is well versed in dance and I have not recently seen him dancing but in his young days i have seen him dancing too <laughs> now he makes others to dance so uh, with this he is uh, you know the uh, matadipati the kind of the traditional head of kambali swami mat in pondicherry uh, the anand ashram the tradition of swami geetanand ji and also he is a director of saiter the center for yoga therapy education and research as a part of the balaji vidyapeeth uh, university there in pondicherry and only if i keep on telling his stories one hour will be not be enough so i should stop here and with this uh, i just thought we would you know have a kind of a chat with uh, shri dr anand balayogi ji so welcome you and now once again definitely uh, subhu bhaiya it's a wonderful opportunity to have uh, the coffee with yogi and as you so rightly said uh, i knew that it was coffee so i said i'll bring my own cup to the meeting because uh, virtually it is tough to serve a cup uh, at the same time the raga kapi which yeah. is uh, actually a south indian version of the north indian raga it's actually a hindustani raga that we have modified yanatavam seidane yashodaye and it's a very beautiful uh, melody so i think the beauty of a conversation with people who are in yoga now when we say yogi for me that term is a very elevated term so i like to say we are all yoga sadhakas we are also yoga sevakas because we are all servants of the great art and science of yoga uh, and i think this is a wonderful idea where people can express themselves as they are without any big banner or any sort of paraphernalia and just see the human and humane aspects of what our yoga people are so great. thank you for this great idea that's why and i have put this privilege to be here yes mutually <laughs> this that's where i have put the spelling of the yogi in the poster to be y o g to be in capital and i a small i so yogi is a small i that is what is required so in today's world you know uh, with all these challenges which are emerging so how do you see today's world as a, a practitioner of yoga a yoga sadhaka a teacher of yoga you have been in research of yoga for uh, decades together so how do you look at the situation to today as a yogic person well i think if uh, you know 6 months ago if somebody had said that in 2020 this is what the world is going to be like none of us would have believed that person if they had said there won't be any flights there won't be any ships people are going to be at home the movie theaters are going to be closed even yoga shalas are going to be closed tirupati will be closed you know nobody would have even believed the person and most probably that person would have been sent to a psychiatrist for an evaluation of the mental condition yet today that that is the actual reality of the world in which we are living so i think what we are living is something that nobody would have ever conceived and if you had tried to make a movie of what this is no one would have believed us that covid coronavirus nova coronavirus that the whole virus load in the whole planet right now is less than 1.5 grams now imagine 1.5 grams less than 1.5 grams virus and humanity has been brought to its knees i think this is a beautiful opportunity for us as humanity to realize we are not the big boss there is a much bigger boss than us so i think the lessons of covid 19 which actually are more it just happened the last few days of 19 they found it otherwise it would have been covid 2020 uh, 
Um, I think that these times are an opportunity for a lot of swadhyaya, a lot of self-reflection and trying to understand what is it we human beings have actually done wrong on this planet. Because mother nature and Indian culture has always understood nature as mother. That is why Prakriti is a feminine energy. So mother nature, we have actually been very spoiled rats. We have behaved very badly. We have actually really done such damage to the planet on which we live. Again, Bhumi Mata, Mother Earth. So I think as from a yogic perspective, I would say that the greatest thing in the last few months for me has been a deep contemplation. What is it we as humanity must change? And that COVID-19 is a catalyst for humanity to change itself and transform into humanity 2020 that should be the best version of ourselves, A version that cares about other people, a version that cares about the planet on which we live, and going back to Indian Sanskriti, which teaches us to respect Earth. When in Bharatanatyam we start the Namaskaram, we touch the booby and we say, I'm going to be stamping on you. Please forgive me for stamping on you. This is the attitude. So these are times that are very tough. A lot of us are struggling physically, emotionally, financially, socially, and the question comes, are we suffering spiritually? The thing is, though the other four we are suffering, I think spiritually we may be actually having an opportunity for growth. And this is why Maharishi Patanjali tells us, Dukkameva sarvam vivekinaha. Maybe that viveka is coming in us. We have an opportunity because physically we cannot go any place. We don't have the money to spend. We don't have the jobs. We don't have the material comforts that we are used to. We don't have the material distractions we are used to. But maybe because of that, we have more chances to go in. And right from the uh, end of March, when the lockdown was announced in India, the Indian Yoga Association started a global prayer. And for 48 days, one full mandala, Morning and evening, 96 sessions, I led the global prayer. And it was an amazing catharsis. It was an amazing experience. And today was my 65th morning session online. And I tell you, it has been an opportunity for my students and me to connect in ways we have never connected before. So I think COVID has reduced the material Maya Jal and enabled us to go on an Antar Mukha Yatra in a much more disciplined manner. Very nice. That is, uh, that's a very great uh, understanding, a very matured understanding, which definitely how would a yoga person would look into. In fact, um, I was following very keenly your uh, daily, the global yoga prayers, which you had aptly called as Vishwa Yoga Prathana. So that is a very uh, nice and I, Because the term in Sanskrit, every word in Sanskrit has deep meaning and becomes a mantra. When you say prayer, it doesn't have that same as prathana. Because prathana is, prayer is like the chalk. Okay, the chalk is prayer. The cheese is prathana. Wow. Uh, chalk and very, cheese. Very happy so that is why I felt Vishwa Yoga Prathana reflected what the yogic perspective of prayer is. Because prayer is not such a concept for us, but Prathana is, Sankalpa is. And that is why it is making a Sankalpa as part of that Vishwa Yoga Prathana. So very, very true. Very beautiful experience. When um, the announcement was made, so one of my friends at the Facebook, uh, Sri Desh Pandey, who is a very staunch, hardcore, um, you know, for the Indian culture who stands, he immediately asks, so why do you call it as a prayer? So the context of prayer differs from what the yoga perspective prathana would be. And when you aptly named it, I think it was uh, answered very well. And that shows, you know, that this immediate standpoint that you could take because you have been always uh, coming in a parampara, 
though today in yoga we have a lot of new uh, kind of styles which are emerging new trends which are coming we have so and so kind of i don't have the name lot many you know as rightly even recently you had posted a post with somebody doing with the shoes and <laughs> that's in fact um, just yesterday i had seen one of my student who who did she was just driving um, um somewhere abroad she is living so she just got down as in a beautiful scenario and then she could immediately want to take a click so she just took her leg up and it was an atraj asana and then she took a click then i said why do you do this you know so then she said immediately yes i do realize uh, I, i'm sorry so so this uh, kind of standpoint you could take because you had been representing the authentic parampara uh, so what do you think is the significance or role of uh, yoga paramparas in today's because today what has happened people don't think even i need a teacher to do yoga especially now this online has started why do i re- i need a live person to be there when i have already the videos which are there even even for example i can see your video from the youtube and practice yes. why, when i why i had to uh, sign into the first session and do so then yes. that is the kind of thinking the modern generation of uh, so called yoga teachers and yoga practitioner community is getting what do you think as the significance mm. of the parampara which is important you know when we talk about online i have always been a high critic of online teaching me too <laughs> and it is interesting that now i am actually seeing the plus point of it because there's no alternative and it is very interesting because i have seen how people all over the world can come together in the same place at the same time but we still need a live interaction because if i were to show you a beautiful masala dosa now on the video and say you know subhu bhaiya uh, have you had a good dinner now you don't need to eat you'll say you know i saw it i liked what it looks like but i need to eat it to satisfy my hunger so we need the real thing to satisfy the spiritual hunger all of us have a spiritual hunger all of us have within us a vacuum that wants to be filled nature doesn't like a vacuum that is why parinama occurs because parinama has to be there because prakriti apura it cannot leave a vacuum it has to fill the vacuum so spiritual urge with it within, within us it wants the real thing now initially the body says okay i can do some asana i feel good then you say i do some pranayama i feel good because the mind is more calm i sit for some contemplation some dhyanam and i feel better but then you start to say is there something deeper and that is where the philosophy and psychology of yoga comes alive within us for that you need an authentic parampara because in the parampara the most important thing is you are connecting to timeless teachings purvesham api guruhu kalenaana vachedat that is what patanjali talks about ishvara so we want to connect to the energy source because it is like you have a mobile phone that mobile phone will run for some time after that it won't have energy you need to connect to an energy source same thing with the physical aspect the modern aspect of yoga for some time it will run on whatever charge it has but then there's no energy and you have to have that prana shakti for that yatha shakti for that prana shakti you have to connect to the source and that is where the parampara comes in because the parampara is the living teaching that has been passed from the guru to the shishya who then becomes the guru to the future shishya who becomes the guru to the future shishya and the unbroken energy of the parampara enables us to sustain our sadhana sadhana to sustain you need energy source energy source is the parampara now what has happened is many paramparas when they modernized they have become corrupt they have become power hungry and they have created a hierarchy i am bigger than you you are always my slave and when this happened the modern mindset revolted against it and this is why many people have gone against the traditional parampara but it doesn't mean one can negate parampara and as someone who represents a parampara as someone who has seen how the teachings flow seamlessly when you are connected to the source you don't have to memorize a book you don't have to go and watch a video and learn something to teach because you are the vehicle you are the upaya 
you are the nimitta the nimitta bhava comes alive and you are the tool for the energies of the parampara to come before every session i chant om tat parampara vidmahe jnana lingeshwaraya dhimahi tanno guru prachodayate and the parampara comes alive it comes into me and i can teach without me being there the ego moves away and you realize you are not the person teaching the parampara is teaching through you and the anava mala which is thermula says anava mala that is the aspita the ahankara automatically comes down one of the most important kleshas of aspita comes down because you realize i am not the doer i am not the teacher i am only the vehicle for the teachings to reach others so the parampara is very essential because the parampara is a living connection now we all want to have a dead connection because then we can say we can put the guru's photo and we can say guru told me and guru is happy with whatever i do and i do any nonsense whereas the living tradition will tell you what you are doing is wrong and that is why for me the living tradition is essential for real yoga to manifest and to sustain one's yoga sadhana very excellently put it in a beautiful way and uh, but at the same time what i have observed that though we have beautiful paramparas uh, uh, we have the vedic traditions the vedanta paramparas and yoga also we have beautiful traditions for example krishnamacharya's tradition um, so we have the lineage of various yoga maharishis who are there and same time each one have been having a very uniqueness each yes. parampara has a unique contribution to uh, give so do they have they represent the same uh, the kind of union of yoga which is uh, from that sakshat ishvara which is coming down the lineage but each parampara has something very unique so uh, what do you think as that which is so unique in the uh, tradition which you represent uh, and can you highlight about that uh, what is the parampara that you represent and what is that which yes. is so unique that you think you see actually this concept of parampara and uh, different traditions and lineages is part of all aspects of indian culture uh, be it music be it dance be it yoga be it the art the temple making the shilpa shastra every place the lineage has been different and i remember when i first learned mridangam my first mridangam master who was k m vaidyanathan sir from uh, krishnapuram when he started the mridangam i started ta ti tom nam four notes are there the basic rhythmic pattern it starts with the left so ta ti tom nam ta ti tom nam tat ti tom nam tat ti tom nam like that then he left pondicherry so he said i will put you on the hands of another good master tiruvallur krishnamurthy sir who is the uncle of bhaktavatsalam the great mridangam maestro so when i went to krishnamurthy sir what happened is i did this he said no 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 you have to play tha on the right side tha thi tom nam so instead of tha thi tom nam now i is playing tha thi tom nam now as a young kid it was very confusing because it was exactly the opposite so in the yoga traditions also many times you find someone says do it this way the other tradition says don't do it that way and people get confused so what i like to tell people is that you need to understand all traditions respect all traditions and personally how i express it is each tradition each parampara is perfect within its own structure the problem what we are doing we are taking it out of structure different parampara out of structure and then we are having conflict if you understand the parampara within its structure there are no conflicts and that is why the indian principle is always unity and diversity which is the principle of the indian yoga association where all the traditions have come together but at the same time though i make an attempt to understand other traditions though i value and respect other traditions i acknowledge their uniqueness when i practice i practice the tradition in which i have been taught and brought up that is the geeta ananda tradition now when my father swami geetananda giri was teaching he never said this is the geetananda yoga 
he just said yoga and when people used to ask him swamiji what type of yoga do you teach he said yoga is yoga is yoga no prefix no suffix so many of my father's students when nowadays they find us using the term the gita and the tradition or gita and the yoga they say your father would not accept it and i say yes my father would not accept it in his time but nowadays in order to pe people to know that this is a lineage you have to give it a prefix or suffix but while we are teaching people we are not telling them now we are teaching you gita and the yoga now we are doing gita and the yoga we don't say it it is only yoga but when you want to identify it externally you use the prefix and suffix so then they asked my father okay if you have to give a name to it what do what would you call it he said this is the tradition of the great rishis so he said this is the rishi culture yoga it is the yoga as coming from the rishis who are our great masters and the originators of the indian systems they are the ones who could perceive it and they gave it in words and in writing for us they never claimed to invent it they only discovered it and that is why all indian traditions were never invented they were discovered by the rishis who perceived it and then they gave it to us then we say okay patanjali patanjali maharishi codified the yoga darshana he never created it he codified it so whether it be kapila for sankhya or whatever they codified so my father used to say rishi culture yoga is a way then people said what is it so then my mother amma ji meenakshi devi what she said was rishi culture ashtanga yoga because it is based on the ashtanga yoga of maharishi patanjali so now when you start to say rishi culture ashtanga yoga you have to explain to people who is a rishi what is culture because nobody has any culture anymore you have to say what is ashta and what is anga and they get confused with other systems that are also Otherwise called ashtanga ah it becomes a kashtanga too and then what is yoga so then we started saying okay geeta nanda tradition or geeta nanda yoga just for identification now in our tradition there is a great importance placed on understanding yoga in the cultural context of india so we have given lot of importance to understanding the indian culture bharatiya sanskriti and sanatana dharma so sanatana dharma bharatiya sanskriti is the foundation from which yoga has come and i tell people if you want to understand yoga properly you have to understand the culture from which it has come you don't have to be indian you don't have to be hindu but you have to respect and understand the culture because if you take the culture away from it you will have what my dear kaustub calls jada yoga dead body yoga but it will not be a living yoga at all because you have diversified it is like you have taken the plant out of the soil the plant will die it will dry up and die it needs its connection to the soil so in our tradition great importance on indian culture which is why our students they learn different aspects of indian culture be it mantra be it the traditional puja be it the indian dance the indian music the indian way of eating the indian way of living and dressing the indian way of approaching life when we say indian i'm not talking about modern indian i'm talking about the traditional bharatiya sanskriti method and many of them take on a spiritual name which is of indian origin we do not like to go around giving names to people or giving sanyas my father only gave one person sanyas swami yogananda giri in italy who now has the geeta and the ashram there because my father was not into you know sort of giving people sanyas or indian names you had to earn it to have a nama karana you had to earn that nama karana and it is a spiritual name to be used in spiritual connotation the second thing in our tradition which is very unique is all the practices are based on energy they are all based on prana and energy so whether you do an asana whether you do a kriya whether you do a pranayama it or a meditative practice a contemplative practice whatever you do the whole basis is energy and this is because my father's guru swami kanakananda bhigu he was a bengali tantric 
So the Tantra as a Dakshina Marga Tantra, the right hand Tantra, where we understand that everything is energy. And so every practice is based on energy. When we lie down in Shavasana, we do it in a certain way so that the energy is maintained. Other traditions do it for relaxation. For us, Shavasana is not only relaxation, it is also an energy practice. When we do Pranayama, it is not just a breathing practice, it is an energy practice. Every asana is done understanding the energy as loma and viloma, the equal and opposite energies. And this is why the practices, they are based on energy. The foundation is based on Indian culture and a great emphasis on pranayama. In fact, for us, my father used to work with at least 40 pranayamas during the six month course. And his teachings go up to 120 pranayamas. Now people say there are only eight classical. See the eight classical are mentioned in the book, but it doesn't mean there are only eight. There are many, many more practices that are part of living traditions. And when the books were written or the books were dictated, what was done is what are the most important? So for example, if I were to say, what are the most important events of 2019? And I give 10 events. It doesn't mean only 10 things happened in 2019. I have said these are the 10 most important. So people have got stuck with what is in the book is the only yoga. Please understand, Indian tradition was never a bookish tradition. It was always a tradition that was living and evolving and transforming. The books are only meant for our guidance. They, the book should never limit us. So a great importance on learning to breathe properly and work with prana. So I would say the work with the prana, the work with the shakti, the energy, and the Indian culture. I think these are the highlights of what would be in our tradition, the Gita and other tradition. So nice, uh, very uh, nice to hear those, at least even though uh, I'm not going to practice immediately or something, but to know that this much is the profound knowledge which is given by the tradition itself is very overwhelming. And uh, when I was hearing that, I was uh, like a little kind of confused. I just, for the want of clarity, I want to ask about, uh, because uh, um, uh, I have not got the fortunate uh, blessing of uh, meeting Swamiji. Uh, but I had met Amaji, I have met you, and uh, through you, I have definitely, I'm receiving the grace of Swamiji. So when you had been saying, see, he's your father, so that means um, he is a grihastha, he is married, we see Amaji being there. And when you said, um, you know, we address him as Swamiji, and he's serving a proper sannyasa named Swami Gitananda Giri. The Giri, Puri, uh, all those Ananda, they are the Dasanami. Tradition. Dasanami, Dasanami yeah. traditions. So, Today happens to be the sannyasa, 91st sannyasa day of Swami Shivananji also. June 1st is the 91st sannyasa day of Swami Shivananda Saraswati. They come in the yes. tradition. So like yes. this. And then you also did mention that Swamiji gave sannyasa to Swami Yogananda, who is in Italy now. So yes, he had yes. kept the sannyasa parampara also. So this yes. is quite like whether, whether Swamiji was a sannyasa yes. or a yes. or it was like just a curiosity. And beautiful, it. beautiful question. See, that is why... How I like to define it is my father was a Rishi. And all our Rishis were Grahasthir. None of the Rishis were unmarried. They were all married. And all our Gothra today in India are based on the Sapta Rishi. Exactly. This concept that a Swami doesn't have Grahastha was a, a phenomenon that sort of came after Buddhism and Jainism rose in India. And then when Adi Shankara codified or recodified Hinduism, the ideas from Buddhism and Jainism came in and you started to say a Swami is celibate and you know this type of distinction. But when we go back into our Vedic tradition, all our Rishis had families, not one family, many families also, not one child, many children also. And often the children also became Rakshas also. So, it's not that all of them became rishis also. Same Kashyap, eh? same Kashyap Maharishi. You know, he at this side, the devatas are born from him, the asuras yes. are born. So. so, this is how I define it because we have now got used to the fact that if you take sannyas, you leave your family sort of. We have looked at sannyas as a cutaway, whereas in our tradition, 
it is not a cutaway because what happens is you the actual word of swami the meaning is swa ami a master of yourself wow so are you a master of that's why swa swami shaktyo is the concept in patanjali's yoga darshana swa swami shaktyo he says are you a master of yourself that is the test of being a swami not the clothes or the the way people project it and this is the mistake that has happened and i think one has to remember that the rishi culture parampara is a culture that looks as a rishi and that is why my father he was often called yoga rishi and then he became yoga maharishi after his samadhi so we refer to him as yoga maharishi swami geetananda giri and he was yoga rishi swami geetananda giri while he was alive the maharishi was after the maha samadhi the change occurred and my mother was considered as a rishi patni rishi patni yoga charini meenakshi devi bhavanani so a rishi yoga rishi a rishi patni and that is why i consider myself a rishi putra and that is the primary role that i consider my dharma is as a rishi putra everything else for me is peripheral everything else is secondary and that is how i define it i also a... like to i like to also mention here that if i had turned out as the worst scoundrel and i had been the biggest villain on earth or like one of those rakshas that came out of the asuras who came out of kashyapa it would have then shown that my father and mother coming together was wrong by my life by living a life of yoga i am also bringing up the concept that their union was a union of yoga and that yoga union is the highest level of union because when two great yogis come together they put a seed that has the potential to take it forward so my life is my samarpana to my parents wow in fact i was about to ask the next question of how do you consider you to be are you a rishi or you know maharishi or what is that so you had answered at at, at present i am gangster yogi <laughs> Oh, because I, gangster see ananda is a very diplomatic type of person so i i like to speak the truth pleasantly and even the unpleasant truth i like to speak pleasantly because we say priyam vada satyam vada priyam vada na priyam na vada but i say you should speak the truth even the unpleasant truth pleasantly so that is ananda's diplomacy level but then what is happening is that sometimes you have to be a bit non diplomatic so gangster yogi gives me the opportunity to bring out that non diplomatic side to me but usually i like to tell people calling me ananda is fine dr ananda has become an identity and for my children at yoganjali natyalayam dr sir this dr sir is an identity that many people have given me and i resonate with that so being called a yogi or even guru that's one of the words that i really run away from because i believe that is a very exalted word guru guruji is a very exalted word the only reason i use yoga charya is it was given to me by my by father after my studies with him and so as a respect to him i use that term because otherwise even that word yoga charya for me is a very great word yogi is a very great word and as i said at the beginning we are a yoga sadhaka we are a yoga sevaka that is the role and we are a child of yoga yoga is the mother we are the child yoga putra yes. that is another so, huh? in fact i i was just speaking of a beautiful article written by amaji uh, mm-hmm. the first of march when i had organized a, you know a women's yoga conference yes so, yes, yes. Uh, you had sent a beautiful article which amma had sent it was her experience when she had conceived you and yes. it was kind of a yogic uh, thing the real ananda that she was experiencing uh, yes. which she has wonderfully mentioned and but unfortunately after this the lockdown started immediately that we are uh, not able to bring it out to the publication now i'm working on the edi- editing part of it maybe as a e version of it i'm going i will to look forward to it because soon, that's so. a very special article because she talks about the yoga of motherhood and how giving birth to another being maybe one of the greatest yogic experiences a mother can have a woman can have and, and that i'm sure that she had passed on experience. that to her uh, daughter in law also 
<laughs> yes, uh, yes. They've been and in fact, therefore, the, the two very much, kids. <laughs> very much. Both, both of them are going through the teens, and when they come out of the teens, everything will be fine. <laughs> Uh, there is a wonderful series, uh, you know, Tell Me Appa, which uh, uh, has been doing, I've been following that, so nice of it. Absolutely. So, um, in you, uh, as Dr. Ananda, uh, as a you know, person as I, in the beginning, as I said, so you have the beautiful uh, tradition of yoga, which you have imbibed or inherited, that is there, and also by education, by profession, you as a medical doctor, then you have taken special keen interest in music and dance, and uh, the Indian tradition and the British culture. So how do you see all those put together for the overall growth of a person, uh, the scientific education, the, uh, the modern education, also the traditional wisdom, along with arts and culture, all this put together. Do you think uh, if you have been overloaded with all those uh, things or do you really see these as essential things for a child's growth and for a personality growth? I think it's a very beautiful question, uh, Subhubaya, because um, what happens is, I think as a child, I often used to think my parents should have had six kids. Then one would have been a doctor, one would have been the Mridangist, one would be the vocalist, you know, like that. And there were times where maybe it felt a bit overloading. But then very early in my life, I was fortunate to realize the blessing. And when you realize your blessing, you don't feel overloaded anymore. When you feel, when you realize how blessed you are, you don't feel stressed anymore. And I started to realize how blessed I was to have this combination of the traditional Gurukula teaching of yoga, music, and dance with the modern education of going to school. I only went to school in seventh standard when I was 13. Till then, I was at home, home school. So I had more of the Vedic mantra chanting, learning the music, learning the dance, the murangam and all of that, and climbing a lot of trees. Wow. Then I went to school, did well at school, where also I had my cricket opportunity. I would have been the, instead of Sachin Tendulkar, it would have been Ananda Balayogi up there with 100 centuries. But then my life is different, Sachin's life is different. And I was, I was the first school kid in uh, Kodaikanal to hit a century. I was an opening batsman and played wow. for the districts and all that. Uh, the legal district and other things like that. But then I went on to get my medical education. And when I went to medicine, what I realized, after my schooling, I took two years to study officially with my father as a student. 1991 to 93. Till then, I had got it by osmosis. But then those two years, they codified the teachings to me very solidly. And then I went in to study medicine. So I look at medicine from a yogic perspective. Many modern doctors get interested in yoga, but they are looking at yoga from a medical perspective, which is reductionist. Yoga is expansionist perspective. It's like the telescope. Modern uh, science is like a microscope. So they are looking at yoga under the microscope, whereas I am looking at medicine through a telescope. And when you can have the microscope and the telescope, both perspectives together, you get the holistic perspective. So I feel that it is essential one has a traditional and modern education. Because only traditional, what happens is we often, we miss out on something that the modern education gives us a systematization, a rationalization, which is very, very important also. But only the modern education, it sort of lacks the other side. So it's like either head or heart. If you think of Gurukula and tradition as the heart, modern education as the head, people are caught between the head and the heart, which is which. And that is why I say it cannot be head or heart. It has to be head and heart. It is not you or me, it is you and me. It is not traditional or modern, it is traditional and modern. Which is one of the things my father brought in, because he was also a doctor. So he was a doctor with the yoga. I am a, the same, the doctor with the yoga. So we bridge both, and I see myself as a human bridge between yoga and modern medicine. That people on the yoga side can understand modern medicine through me, 
people on the modern medicine side can understand yoga through me and i am creating a union between the traditional and the modern just by being me and i think it is a blessing to have that type of opportunity and many and, kids uh, at yoga chali talking about the cytogenesis which is yeah that. cellutogenesis is Cellutogen. perfectly that because cellutogenesis is the capacity of focus on swasthya rather than on roga and aroga see roga is disease arogya is the negation of disease but swasthya swasth is no disease it is you being you when you are you you are healthy when you are trying to be somebody else you are not healthy and what i have found is that the young people at yoga anjali over the last three decades so many of them who have studied yoga with me or dance and music they have gone on to become doctors engineers business people politicians whatever they have taken the yoga into all walks of the life and i think it is a very beautiful combination because to put it in simplistic ways modern education is like carbohydrate protein and fat but the cultural education tradition education is the vitamin and minerals and if you don't have the vitamin and minerals your digestion is not going to be proper so nicely uh, put forth and yeah i think um we are almost towards the end of the time that we have we can go on chatting but we need to conclude it by 9 and um, so the, i thought the last part of this uh, beautiful interaction we would keep it as a rapid fire round so bishop are, bishop, bishop. <laughs> yes you are a fire brand of yoga of course <laughs> and um, so uh, i thought of you know, keeping a rapid fire round quickly asking so i didn't think much just whatever randomly i could think of i would just you know ask and you need to quickly uh, in in a second you should answer answer wow so time starts now so ananda bliss your favorite asana my own state of being your favorite raga kalyani hope that's not your girlfriend <laughs> and uh, uh your life joy your wife a reflection gangster yogi my alter ego corona an opportunity for transformation bharata huh? bharata india bharat my soul and modern yoga plastic yes thank you thank you so much <laughs> the nice that is day. that is an amazing rapid fire in fact <laughs> so i even did not think anything what to uh, ask or anything just whatever randomly could come in the mind in fact Very i had been, i have been thinking for a while before starting this what would ask nothing came So it's not just that. At that time, what whatever comes in mind, let us just you know that is the best. I think you know keeping the blank and then, then divinity you know sahaj. Think that has to be sahaja. I, that's what. So that was so nice of you to uh, you know uh, join with me in this uh, humble attempt of introducing the paramparas. I wanted to give the authentic people each parampara. As I said, has a uniqueness. um uh, and then that should be brought out we should not just in the same way and we have to come together at the same time each has a uniqueness which has to be brought out Sorry. people then they they have to get exposed to all those because today i see a lot of people going and doing a one month course and then with a certificate so they become a yoga teacher immediately and uh, whereas you know i also had a fortunate time of spending you know years together with my gurus especially uh, with uh, uh, mahatma krishna premi swami it could be in the ramkrishna yes. mat it could be then at spasa where i was fortunate yes. to be with guru ji dr nagendra dr nagar sai so big huge family with which i happened to live there so just being in such place i have if i am to some extent doing something good for society whatever possible extent it is all from the teachers what i have got an association of good people who would come there to such a place it's not some people who are there who are teaching us people like you keep coming and going so the satsanga happens so it's the yoga way, family yeah which people are missing today you know though it's very overall
you see the way yoga is spreading today. At the same time, there are a lot of things like this. So I thought if only we can you know, exchange ideas, if we come together and exchange ideas. So maybe it can inspire a few of the youngsters who are coming in the path is what I thought of. And definitely we had a very good uh, session and I hope to have much more such interactive sessions with you. And uh, in the end, just want to ask you to uh, sing for us something uh, uh, which you would. <laughs> Maybe it can be a kind of a yes. meditative state for us. To it, is, it, is, it is actually a song I had composed many years ago in praise of yoga. Because uh, for me, what yoga means is brought out in this. Yoga Tattuvat Unandidubhumi Yoga Tattuvat Unandidubhumi Parpugalum Adai Payindridubhumi Yoga Tattuvat Unandidubhumi Sayalai Saivadum Sirapaga Saivadum Say a lay, say a dum, say a pag, say a dum, say the pin pal and paramal, irupa de yogam. Say a lay, say a dum, say a pag, say a dum, say the pin pal and paramal, irupa de yogam. Yoga tattoo birthday, one Alai payu manadai, oru nilai padathi. Alai payu manadai, oru nilai padathi. Ullukum deva tanmayai unandu. Alai payu manadai, oru nilai padathi. Ullukum deva tanmayai unandu. Mani the nai poradi, Mani the nai bondi, Mani the nai poradi, Mani the nai bondi, Param pull than mill the may wonderkum. Mani the nai poradi, Mani the nai bondi, Param pull than mill the may wonderkum. Two years. Yoga tattu vatai unandedu bome unandedu bome unandedu bome Wow. <laughs> so I think this will become a yoga anthem. I know that for the yoga day or something. Of course, it's in Tamil. Why not Tamil? Be yes. Tamil is a very great and ancient language. I think in Tamil, I write in Tamil. And that is why all my musical compositions are in Tamil. Because for me, it, it enables me to express my heartfelt Baba. Wow. That's so nice. Because uh, you sang a Tamil song, I'm inspired to share a small uh, piece in Tamil. Yes. Uh, which was composed by me on Dr. Ah. Ananda. Oh my God. On the occasion yes. of his birth, on his occasion of his birthday, which was oh my God. recently, was the, I think in the first week of May. Uh, it was April, uh, 16th of April. 16th of April, I remember. And I remember that was such an amazing birthday gift. Thank you, thank you so much. It was just spontaneous. Whatever I recollected about you, I just wanted to share. It could be too much for my friends uh, who are listening to this uh, from all over uh, different parts of India and abroad. But still, um, you know. Uh, I also, you know, Tamil is my mother tongue as well. I come from the holy land of Madurai, so I'd like to share with proud. I'll, it's a, just a read. I'll just read the uh, song. I can't sing like when he has sung. You know, when I sing, then it will be a rasabanga. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'll read it. Palpatta manangalai panpadatta parnil vanda guru gita anandar paramparayil vanduditta panbone. Pala yogi, Nivadi Palland. Meenakshi Maindane Anandane. As we know, his mother, Amma, is Meenakshi Devi. So, Meenakshi Maindane Anandane. Kenaga Titti Kum Pechone. His words are nectar. You have heard for the past one hour. I don't have to say about it. So, people have experienced it. Kenaha Titti Kum Pechone. Devane Patiye Kulanitiye. His wife is Devasena. Uh, uh, beautiful Babi, who uh, is uh, again, you know, I think one more session 
why with only yogis that we should interact we should interact with yoginis to know their side of it i will definitely catch hold of her so excellent idea the um, uh, kind of the tamil version of devasena is devane so i just put devane pati which means he is also subramanya murugan <laughs> so devane my, nakshat- my nakshatram is kritika nakshatram wow so devane patiye kulanidiye ne devadi devararul kaathilaga may all girls may all gods protect you nanmakkal petritta nannenjoy you know the two child children he had got anandraj and uh, divya who are excellent children so nanmakkal petritta nannenjoy naadi varum cedar kor gurumani nayaganai yemakkellam vilangittoy naanilathil ninnamam nilaithiduga paalathil vallone he can play and i should have asked him to sing and play mrutangam and also dance all that is ashtavatani definitely he could have done it so taalathil vallone geetham isai pone taandavathil therndone taan adu illone the beginning how nicely in a humble way he presented taan adu illone means there is no i in him taapam ta sorry taapamam noi theerkum dhanvantiri aanone he is a, a medical doctor equivalent to dhanvantiri taapamam noi theerkum dhanvantiri aanone tavamunigal valiyadanil yogiyumai aanone இயல்பதனில் எளியோனே வெரி ஹம்பல் ஈஸி எப்போதும் இனியோனே ஆல்வேஸ் ஸோ ஸ்வீட் இசை யோகி ஆனோனே ஹி இஸ் அனோ மியூசிக்கல் யோகி தட்ஸ் வாட் ஹி இஸ் சம்டைம்ஸ் வெரி டிஃபிகல்ட் டு ஹியர் சம் ஆஃப் தி யோகா டீச்சர்ஸ் வென் ஸ்பீக் ஸோ ஹீரோ ஹிஸ் ஹி இஸ் வெரி ஸ்பீக்ஸ் இட் இஸ் லைக் அ மியூசிக் ஸோ இசை யோகி ஆனோனே யோகி குல இளவரசே ஐ கால் இம் அஸ் யோகி குல ஹி இஸ் அ பிரின்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி um yoga kula because the king as swami ji so he is definitely the prince for us so yogi kula ilavarase isayengum unkeerthi paraviduga isaindite en manadal vaalthiruven so i uh, wish that dr anand pal yogi is uh, seva his shikshana and his markadarshana be upon all people who are taking the path of yoga is definitely definitely a kind of an exemplary uh, Uh, yoga sadhaka yoga acharya who represents a parampara who is also as he rightly brought swami vivekananda used to say you know combine the best of the east with the best of the west and that is what uh, he had been representing and uh, i'm so thankful for him with a very short notice just this idea came to me i just shared with him and uh, without any hesitation immediately quickly that he accepted that is so nice of dr anand pal yogi to be with us and uh, this is just i wanted to you know kind of introduce bring uh, to introduce to the world of yoga such traditional things which are there so you take and krishna says in the gita edechasi sadakur so now the ball is in your court you can you know take the learnings even now dr banat pal yogi ji has been doing wonderful sessions recently just completed a session on patanjali yoga darshana is going to start one on uh, yantra so like this many teachings now the opportunities that we are getting online sessions uh we, we should all make use of that and take ahead our yoga journey so this once again i thank dr anand palayogi ji to be with us and may his guidance be always be with me and all of us in the yoga fraternity and in the series tomorrow we are going to have at another uh, salvat dr ishwar basavareddy ji who is uh, uh, heading the national institute of yoga Uh, for decades he had been the uh, director there and from delhi he had been giving a wonderful guidance world over and so i thought uh, it is so important to know um, his knowledge he has he has also been a wonderful researcher a kind of a teacher and also the head of a national institute so we should uh, talk to him i thought again quickly with just you know a short notice i just when i called him he immediately uh, agreed to be with us tomorrow night so please join us and those who have not yet got to know about this information i request all my friends and all my students and also dr uh, anand pal yogi's friends and students who are see this share this to everybody and uh, let more and more people get benefited out of the sessions let us all join together if you have any questions particular questions to ask for example those who have seen today uh, i couldn't see the chat uh, i will later i'll just try to see in case you have any questions for dr anand pal yogi ji you would share to him and get back the answers and i'll definitely share with you all and tomorrow if you have any questions to be asked to dr ishwar basavareddy and we may have i would particularly today or tomorrow i'll share with you 
uh, uh, different yogis whom we are going to meet, yogis and yoginis we are going to meet. So if you have any specific questions, you're free, you're free to send them to me, share them to me. And on all your behalf, I will take these interactions. Thank you all so much. Hari Om Namaste.